Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm reacting to Sadguru on Fear of Failure. Sadguru. <laughs> the fear of failure makes me immobilize. How do I change it? <laughs> A couple logical things here. One, if you cannot change it, you have already failed. So, <laughs> are you fearful? If you're fearful of failing, then you have already failed. So are you fearful of that? So you have to try. You have to try to not fail. In order to fail, you don't have to try. <laughs> I mean, if the, for those people who can put that into a logical sense, you know what, that's right. I, I only fail if I don't try. If I try, I have a chance of failure, but it's not guaranteed. A guaranteed way of failing is by not trying at all. So if you have a fear of failing, then guess what? Trying is the best bet of not failing. Brian 2024 <laughs> I'm sure someone has said that before how do I change it uh, well that quote could help some people you know it's just not realizing that by not trying at all is actually failing is 100% guaranteed to fail <laughs> but by trying you reduce that failure chance um, other way other than that is the fact that for me <clears throat> I don't necessarily have a fear of failure. I mean, don't get me wrong. There, like, like if it's not money involved per se, or um, like your life savings and stuff, I don't necessarily have a fear of failure, except for kind of those moments. But at the same time, I will give it my best shot ever, <coughs> because if it's something that I genuinely believe in then I want to make sure that it will succeed. I will try my darnest to make sure it succeeds. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, I, I don't want to keep going. Oh, just be enlightened. Boom, done, you know, next question. Enlighten. Next question. Enlighten. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to just say that's the answer, which is the answer, but people achieving that is quite difficult. So a bit more practical solutions is what I like to... Um, uh, advice <laughs> but again not professional in anything other than speaking <laughs> clearly let's go ahead and give this video a shot <clears throat> for one who is you who is seeing this life as a stepping stone for a larger possibility for him there is no failure for one who is looking at the simple events of this life itself as the goal of life, for him there is failure and success. If you are just seeing this life as a stepping stone for a larger possibility, if you have a good deal, you use that for your well-being. If you have a bad deal, you use that for your well-being. The economy was on the boom, when every fool could be successful, <laughs> no. It didn't take much. When the economy is on the boom, everybody gets carried, isn't it? Now there has been a meltdown. Now it takes something else to be successful. <laughs> so, when the economy was on the boom, you could have brought a certain dispassion towards the money that's flowing in. Now the economy is down, the taps are all closed up. It's time to come, meditate, walk in the mountains. There's a lot of time. I turn off CC because it's so far behind, it's pointless. <clears throat> There's a lot of time on your hands, isn't it? When there was money, it took away your time and life. Now the taps are closed, lots of time, <laughs> just the time. So it doesn't matter what the hell happens. It doesn't matter what the hell happens with your life. If you are seeing this life only as a stepping stone for a larger possibility, then whatever the situation, it is beautiful and very useful. Very, very useful. Once there was a farmer like you, who 
who was tired of various natural factors ruling his… the quality of his uh, crop. So one day he called Shiva. It was a wild card entry. <laughs> so he found excess and Shiva said, what? He said, I'm tired of all the natural nonsense happening. Obviously you're not a farmer. I know from history that you were a hunter. You were not a farmer. <laughs> you don't know what it means to farm. Why don't you leave the nature in my hands? I'm a farmer. I know when it should rain, I know when there should be sunlight, I know when there should be wind, I know what… everything. You don't know because you're just a hunter. And you're a crazy ascetic. You're definitely not a good farmer. The wrong times it's raining, at wrong times things are happening. You leave it to me. <clears throat> but those times might be great for hunting. Shiva was one of those moods, he said, okay, oh. <laughs> nature is in your hands. Then the farmer planted his crop, planted a maize crop, rain, poke the land and see, Okay, it's soaked up to six inches, stop. <laughs> then plough it, plant it, wait for two days. Rain, mm, sunlight. Today I'm working in the field, cloud. <laughs> I just imagine it's like, if you, this is also another joke, like you said cloud, it's literally the spot he's standing on, it's just where the shade's at, everywhere else sunlight, and wherever he moves that little shade just follows him. It's kind of like, uh, you know, if there's a rainy cloud, it's like a pretty stereotypical joke, it's this uh, person just standing and it's just raining where he's at, and wherever he moves that cloud just follows him. So everything just happened the way he wanted, a beautiful maize crop came. He was overjoyed, see? I do wonder if everyone else is suffering then besides him. It's good. Nature should be in farmer's hands. And then when the time to harvest came, he wanted to see because none of the birds were coming, he was surprised because that also he said, no birds, no birds. <laughs> Then he went and opened and saw nice big everything, but you opened and saw no grain inside. Then he thought, what the hell is this? What did I do wrong? Then he couldn't figure out because rain, water, sunshine, everything he managed properly. Then again he went back to Shiva. But he was in this condition. <laughs> he waited for many years for him to open his eyes. <laughs> By the time his… you know these many years, the fields and the family, everything went to… Ooh. Hmm. But he wanted to know the answer. What went wrong? His farmer first. Then when Shiva opened his eyes, he asked, I did everything right but there is no grain. Did you sabotage my crop? Shiva said, I've been watching. You were doing… you were in charge so I didn't want to interfere. The rain was great, the sunshine was great, everything was fine. But you stopped all the winds. I used to always send fierce winds which would threaten your crop. But because the plants felt pushed and threatened, they put their roots deeper into the earth. So grain happened. 
Now you have great maize crop. <laughs> no maize? Oh, we never said maize crop. I thought it was like a, like a field where it's just a maze that you walk through. That's something that's done in, in, in uh, the U.S. Is that what it means or is there like a f type of uh, uh, vegetable or fruit or something that's called a maze? I don't know. That's why it's laughing. It's like, oh, now all you have is just a, a maze crop area where you can just walk around in it like for fun instead of actually being a like uh, whatever kind of farm it is. So various situations in your life, either you can use it to make yourself stronger and better or you can sit and cry. This is the choice you have. Everything, it doesn't matter what happens. The most horrific event happened in your life, that also can be used for your growth and your well-being. If only if you have clearly seen the small events of your life. When I say small events, I mean your business, your marriage, your children, all those big things. <laughs> All these things are just a stepping stone. This is not new to you because in this culture, they put this into you for centuries, for millenniums. They told you, your life is about mukti. Your marriage, your business, your social life, these are all just means to get there. Either you go with it or you go without it. But whether you are a sannyasi or you are in the samsara, your only goal is mukti. Yes? The goal was not just for the sannyasi, for everybody it is mukti. If you can walk alone, you walk alone. You want party going with you, you walk with the party. That's your choice. You want to get there quick, you walk along. You want to go there having picnic on the way slowly, you go with people. Choice is yours. But the important thing is whatever the hell you're doing, there's only one goal. So if you have set this up, then all the events of life, everything is beneficial. The boom is beneficial, the meltdown is even more beneficial actually. It is also ecologically very good, you know, the meltdown. No. <laughs> so, the fear of failure. Failure is bad enough. Fear is adding spice to it, isn't it? <laughs> Success happens to you not because you desire it, because you earn it. Everybody desires it. It comes only if you're capable of it. Oh. So, 100% agree with that, what said Guru said there is the fact that, you know, yeah, everyone desires success, that's absolutely true, but the amount of effort you put into something does not guarantee that you succeed, but it reduces your failure chance. Take that into mind. I mean, you could work, you could work as the hardest working person at whatever you're trying to do. It still does not guarantee your success, but you can bet your best bet that you have reduced your failure chance by a great deal. Again, not guaranteed success but you reduce your failure chance. <clears throat> Some people could put very little effort into their business and have great success. Why? It might be something that's in high demand that no one else is doing. You know? <laughs> uh, there's a shop kind of close by that um, that the business owner doesn't put much effort into his business and yet it is successful. He got lucky and I'm sure he was very passionate at first, but that, that kind of died down. <clears throat> so, 
And that, that's the reason why I gave that example, where you could put little effort into something and be successful. But I'm sure he put a lot of effort in the very beginning. Perhaps he did, I don't know. I didn't know at the time. But then I'm also reminded of uh, a story. Again, whether it's true or not, I wouldn't doubt it to be true. And that is that... <clears throat> There's a you could this is a great example whether it's true or not again like I said um, there's a place that uh, that um, doesn't have like it, there's a lot of places in the United States that doesn't have uh, city sewage so it's all in like um, what do you call it uh, <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> in like containers in their yard and it's all collected there and it needs to be emptied out every so often because you know they live out you know kind of like in the countryside and stuff where you know it takes a lot it costs a lot of money to build the city sewage there if it's just only one person it's not worth the expense but if there's a lot of people then they will do it because it's then worth the the tax money you know what's the point of spending like a hundred thousand dollars to build something over there all of a sudden if that guy moves then it's deserted that's a lot of money wasted but anyway, so this person started up a business collecting that stuff, literally going around sucking people's crap out of the ground. <laughs> out of the ground. There's a setup to where they put a little hose in it and it sucks. <laughs> Terrible way to say it, but it literally sucks the crap out of the ground. <laughs> and he makes a lot of money. Why? Because he's the only business open that's doing that, and he can charge whatever he wants. If you want your crap sucked out, <laughs> you're gonna have to pay. Otherwise, you're gonna have to do it yourself. So, I'm sure he, I'm sure they have a pretty reasonable pay, but I'm sure it's kind of expensive. <laughs> but people are willing to pay because they don't want their, they don't, they one, don't want to do it themselves. Um, and they have no one else to do it. So anyways, <laughs> I went a little off topic in terms of the fear of failure, but it, I was talking more along the lines of, things of success as well. Ways to be more successful than failure because, um, you know, you got to look at the fact that you can't just open up a shop that's red, that's like there's 15 of them all over the place and 15 has already failed within the past year. You know, you don't open up another one of those. <clears throat> Even if you think you can do it better, but... I mean, sometimes it's, uh, you have a very high failure risk at that because even though I think you could probably do it better, you know, cost and and uh, was it whatever uh, the quality it matters a lot, and the, probably the distance and location too. But anyways, you, you get the point that you there's many things you can do to reduce your failure chance, um, location, what the product that you're trying to sell, you know, sucking poop. <laughs> Uh, or you know whatever it may be, just be wise about it. Think about think think through think things through. So anyway, that's my reaction to say good on fear of failure. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next vid.